In a world where nerds measure value by the volume of their side cases, where someone with dreams of mediocrity found a replacement for displacement, and where top quality components include adjustable windscreens, one brand reminds us that motorcycles are meant to be fun. You can buy a new Nissan Versa or get a flashy red hot bike and have a smug sense of superiority knowing that you are indeed better than everyone else. You'll sleep tight at night dreaming seamless dreams of Mugello, Espresso, and the clarion call of the 2015 GP season, Forza Valle. Power and technology are meaningless when you can have character and emozione hand forged in Bologna by craftsmen trained for decades and fed nothing but biscottis and crushed Desmo valves. Today we're reviewing the Ducati Panigale V2 and seeing if it's the right sport bike for you. Now the star of today's show is this Panigale V2 and it's a special one because it's one of our giveaway motorcycles. If you hit the link down below to yamenoob.co, you can find out how to get entered to win this bike and join our amazing community. If that doesn't sound appealing, you can always get merch on yamenoobmerch.com. Get a hat, get a t-shirt, whatever you want, and you will get entered to win this motorcycle. January 17th is gonna be the last day to get your entries, so don't miss out. Now let's check out a quick history of this motorcycle. The Panigale V2 can trace its lineage all the way back to the 748. It's commonly thought of the little brother Panigale, and over the years with the 848, the 899, and the 959, this bike has a lot of heritage and history to draw upon as Ducati's signature twin cylinder sport bike. So let's see how it stacks up against other sport bikes. So as a sport bike, the Panigale has everything you'd want, right? Flashy looks, exciting red paint, it's everything that it should be, except kind of not if you look at it from a spec sheet point of view. It's got a 955cc V-twin engine, which sounds really good, but it's only putting down 155 horsepower and 77 foot-pounds of torque. The weight's right on at 441 pounds, and you do have a fully adjustable Showa front fork and a Saks fully adjustable monoshock in the rear, but it's coming in at 16,495, and when you compare that to some of the Japanese leader bikes, and as a spec sheet warrior, it doesn't add up. Why would you get something like this for about the same price as a Japanese leader bike when you're giving up so much power? You really need to dive in a little bit deeper to really understand what makes this a gem of a motorcycle. So let's take a look at it as a street bike. So Spike, you and I love this thing as a street bike. Tell me why you really enjoy it. So what makes this such a good street bike for me is the fact that it's a leader bike with relaxed ergonomics. You can actually sit on this bike for more than an hour without feeling like you want to die. And something I just discovered is just how squishy these grips are. Mm -hmm. It's actually really comfortable and the seat feels like it's meant for you to tour on it almost. It also makes a really usable amount of power. That 155, while it is down from 200 horsepower on something like the R1. How could you live? You can actually use 155 horsepower. Mm -hmm. It's still way too much, but nothing goes crazy plaid on you when you get on the gas. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the thing that kind of sucks about this whole package for me is how hot the seat is. This thing, if you're on it for more than about 45 minutes, that rear exhaust really starts to cook your nuts because apparently Ducati gotta run the rear header right up under the seat for some reason. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the highlights of the bike on the street for you? Well, for me, like you said, it's a super comfortable and pleasant place to sit all day long. Um, but one thing I don't love about it is just like my sled, I can't find it neutral on this bike. You have to do the little Ducati trick where you rev it up and it lets go. So that's kind of funky for me. Uh, passenger accommodations, I mean, Unless you're talking about putting a six-year-old on the back of here, no one else is gonna fit on this tiny little seat. It's a little ridiculous. And then also, for me as someone who likes to do a couple modifications to my bike, this thing is basically unmodifiable. There's like two parts available for it right now, and that's basically it. Also, exhaust systems are in the thousands and thousands of dollars for this motorcycle. So if you like to tinker and modify, it's not gonna be the best bet for you. But speaking of tinkering and modifying, let me tell you about how this thing works as a track bike. Now, when it comes to track day use with your V2, you must temper your expectations. While this is a very committed sport bike, this is not a racing machine, and Ducati doesn't really intend it to be anyways. The target audience here is someone who's gonna take this thing out for a weekend rip. They're not intending it to be a competition or a track day tool. However, that being said, it is quite fun to rail this thing around the track. I did a video where I went up to Eagles Canyon Raceway and spun some laps around in this machine and had a really fun time doing it. However, it is definitely a 7 tenths or 8 tenths kind of bike. 
Whenever you start pushing on the brakes, you start noticing the front end start getting out of sorts a little bit. It never really settles mid-corner. It feels quite twitchy on initial flicking as well, like most street bikes do. So for me, some recommendations I would make if you want to seriously take this thing out to the track. Get yourself some stickier rubber, some Q4s or Pirelli Super Corsa SPs would do the trick. Definitely set up the geometry to be a little bit less twitchy. Talk to your local suspension guy and that's about it. That's seriously all this bike needs to be an awesome track day weapon. But let's be real, you're not gonna buy a Ducati because you're thinking about the practicality or the performance of it. Look at this thing. It is a status symbol through and through. So let's talk about that. So Spy, we all know the real reason why we buy Ducatis, right? They are just this, there's something about them, right? They're just amazing to look at. Yeah, so the, the Ducati, especially the V2, it has this real subtlety about it. It doesn't have these crazy cuts and fins and arrow lines and stuff like that. It's just, it's put together almost as if it was carved out of wood first. Yeah. And then they set the mold to that. I mean, the lines are very flowing. They're very soft. It's not aggressive until you really get on the throttle. Yeah. You know, it's nice and it's easy. I think that's one of the things about it. It's easy. It reminds me of old Ducatis, where they prioritized that beauty first. It was before we had all this crazy aerodynamic wind tunnel testing stuff, and mm -hmm. they're just like, we're just gonna make a really beautiful, flowy, shapey kind of bike, you know? And that's something you don't see in Japanese leader bikes. Mm -hmm. It's, Japanese leader bikes are all about extracting every ounce of power out of a bike. And the Ducati is all about what, how much power can we get out of a bike while still making it look gorgeous. Yeah, and it's the thing too where, you know, Bikes nowadays with 200 plus horsepower and that kind of stuff, like they have bleeding edge performance, but you don't really need all that on the street. That bike's no. so fast already, and it looks really good while it does it too. Yes. You know? It is real world fast. Absolutely. However, it does say Ducati on the tank, yeah. but the fairing says V2. Yeah. And so do any Ducatista, they're gonna look at it and be like, you bought the wrong bike, Sonny. You didn't get the real one. You didn't yeah. get the real one. But if I may add a counterpoint, I think the V2 is the real one because it has more in line with old Ducatis that were twin cylinder bikes and had the real deal, you know, mm -hmm. L-Twins and Desmos and all that stuff. Because I, I bet you next generation Panigale won't even have Desmos. It'll be springs. It'll just be a V4 like everything else. That's kind of boring, you know? But when you show up to your Ducati ride on your, it's your special VIP ride, you pull into the paddock yeah. at Coda for the Ducati Island, they're gonna look at you and be like, oh, you just got the V2, you're just starting out. It's like the first Ferrari that you get <laughs> before you can work your way up to the really fancy yeah. ones. You start with the V2, which is a shame because it's yeah. the better bike. I think so too. But with that in mind, let's think about who should own this motorcycle. Already spite, so in a world where you're trying to pitch a $16,500 motorcycle to someone, that's a pretty small audience, but in your mind, who's the ideal customer for this bike? So this bike is designed, in my opinion, for the rider who wants a leader bike, mm -hmm. but doesn't want all of the excess that comes with that. Yeah. You get an R1, and it is almost unrideable. It's so powerful. It's true. It's so just, it's turned up to 11, if not 12, but you also don't want to sacrifice all of the crazy power and technology that you get out of a modern leader bike and go with a dad bike yeah. like the Super Sport. Mm -hmm. So if you get that happy medium there, there's only one bike that does that, and it's the V2. It's it, true. it really is right down the middle between dad mode and full-on race bike, yeah. which is awesome. For me, I think the V2 could be someone who is trying to enter the Ducati world and they want the Panigale, they want the flashy looks and all that, but they perhaps don't have the pocketbook for the eye-watering price point of a V4. You know, 28 grand for motorcycle. You're like, that's like a down payment on a house in a lot of markets. Let's, let's not kid ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. But to be honest, it's for the guy or girl who's gonna think they left something on the table by not getting the V4. And then they maybe will go to the V4 and then realize that it's too much and will probably come back down anyways. We've seen this so many times where mm -hmm. people go to the high, high horsepower stuff and then just come back because it's more fun riding a slow bike fast. And the V2 is not slow by any means, but it's way slower than a leader bike in you know a full capacity. So that's who I kind of see owning the V2. 
And again, that's just that that thing of your your Ducati guys are gonna judge you if you get the V2. They're gonna judge you no matter what you because, get. Because because you didn't get you you didn't get the V4R, man. You didn't get your Super Legera. It's true. Well, it's a funny story. I was coming back from a ride the other day, and there were three Ducatis coming out of a coffee shop. It was like a V4, uh, Diavol, and some other Ducati. I think a Monster or something like that. And I was on the sled, and it was all dirty. I'd just come back from the trails, and they all looked at me and just kind of just shook their heads, they didn't even wave at me. So it doesn't matter if you got a V2 or a V4, they're always gonna find some reason to judge you. But um, you know, it doesn't matter. I think a lot of people think of Ducati ownership as this like rich guy club and this and that, but really if you love the brand and you love the emozione about it, get the Ducati, it's a sweet, sweet bike. The thing that surprised me the most about the V2 is just how velvety smooth yes. it is to ride. It's, it's every bit a 16.5 bike, every bit. And it, it's no more than you need and everything that you want. Yeah. Which is kind of perfect. Yeah. I think that for me, the Ducati is like a nine out of 10 bike. It's a sweet, sweet stellar ride. Absolutely. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this comprehensive review on the Ducati V2. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Remember to subscribe to the channel. I know a lot of you watch the channel and you don't subscribe. So hit that button. Let me know down below about the V2. We'll catch you on the next one. See you later. A guy or a girl who's gonna think they left something on the table by not getting the V4, but then will then vent. Wow, look how pretty this is. You know what else is pretty? My beautiful face and this next Yammy Noob video. Click it right over here and check it out for yourself. There's fun memes in it, maybe Hayabusa's, maybe some cool stuff. There's only one way to find out. Click that video. Do it now.